was uh, one of only two players who made all CCC, all ACC, third, second team last year, uh, right. third. Most of the guys uh, went pro. And uh, Nora is supported by a couple of juniors and a couple of seniors. Chris Mack has got this team playing together well. I guess the one thing I've often wondered, and I, I'll hit you with it as well, 2013, these very schools between Michigan and Louisville played, and that title got vacated. Really? I mean, I understand they did what they had to do, so who's really the uh, national champion? We didn't have one, but yet everybody yeah. bo- made all that money off jersey sales, tickets. Yeah. That's well, insane. Yeah. What else are you going to do, though? You've got to federalize them somehow. Yeah, right. Okay, so those games never happen. And the only ones that really benefit by our ESPN Classic and all that, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So any other final thoughts about Duke and Michigan State that you want to talk about? Well, there's two teams that, uh, you know, right now they're still trying to find themselves. They're, both teams are younger than people thought. Uh, Michigan State uh, lost uh, Josh Langford, their senior guard. He's got a foot problem that forced him to miss uh, the second half of last season. And he had surgery. They were hoping he'd be ready to go this year. And then he had a setback uh, just uh, like a week or two into practice. And they had to have surgery again. So, you know, so many of these basketball players play the sport year-round and they have brittle feet. Uh, you got to worry that he's not going to come back at all this year. So Michigan State's going to have some younger players stepping in to, to uh, fill in that role. I, I, I think they're, they're definitely capable of being a Final Four team. Cassius Winston. Cassius Winston hasn't hit his stride yet either. They're all American point guard. He's a Big Ten player of the year. He, you know, he's, he's still trying to get himself back uh, mentally to normal after his brother's uh, suicide death has affected him uh, quite a bit. Uh, but he's starting to come raw back into form. Duke, same thing. Uh, you know, the Trey Jones is the only starter out of those four freshmen that came back this year. And uh, they do have Vernon Carey, who's uh, their 6'10 big man, and I think he's going to be a force the rest of the way. He uh, kind of struggled the first couple of games, but he's starting to find his game. Uh, he's had to play a little bit more inside than he did in high school. Uh, and so I think Duke and uh, Michigan State are, are both uh, unfinished projects, unfinished products, but uh, both very, very capable of getting to the Final Four. Uh, one thing I want to add before you get off the air, just to uh, let our audience know that Tommy and I will be doing a sports exchange special, and we're going to cover lots of college sports next week when uh, Candy and I hit the road. So we're going to keep the momentum of the sports exchange going on. I'm going to isolate some of our best guests and give them an opportunity to go in-depth. So we'll go out there and put those things on social media. And, Tom, as always, uh, you know, you'll get op- as many opportunities as we can to promote your book because it's a really great book anyways. And during the holiday time of the season, folks, if you don't go out there and get this book, I think you're really missing out on some great literature and follow the hand-to-hand report. So, Tommy, you got to have enough material next week when we're on the road to fill 45 minutes to an hour with me? I'll get to work on it. Uh, yeah, and I'll tell you, at least I know that you got to go to the Shanahan Report to do it. One other thing I should point out before we close, the man was in Hawaii last week covering the Maui Invitational. Is that a bucket list type of item? Yeah, that was my bucket list. I loved it. And while I was over there, also, I saw Army play at Hawaii. You know, I write a lot about Army. So that, next week is the Army-Navy game uh, on December 14th. So that's another subject to cover. Yeah, was that uh, the f- first time you've ever done the Maui invitation, or was that a one-time bucket list? You can do it every year. Uh, I, well, yeah, I'd love to do it every year. <laughs> yeah, I told my wife to get a job over there. Oh, look at year. this guy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, no, that was my first time, and, yeah, it was a bucket list. I was watch- I've was watched this tournament several years, uh, but while I was watching it last year, it, when Duke was in it, uh, you know, they advertised next year's field. I saw Michigan State was in it. Oh, yeah. And, and uh, you know, i gotta I got to check this item off my list of things I've done. So did you wear a green, a green shirt since you're an oh, agent? No, I, was, uh, I had to be a reporter. I was wearing a white shirt, but I had to be a reporter. <laughs> oh, really? Okay, good stuff. Hey, you know what? we got to deal with it. Hey, just a little preview of what Lewis and I are up ahead. If you bother to watch a Conference USA football game with Florida Atlantic, and UAB, Lewis and I and Candy will be there. So just think about it. 
Sounds good. Yeah, if you want to read any of my Maui stories, go to shittyandreport.com. By all means, do that. So, meanwhile, uh, Tom, glad to have you on the program. I'll contact you. We'll get ready for Thursday's program. And then you and I will do some major planning for next week. Lewis, you want any quick closing thoughts? No, I mean, you know, nice to see Michigan playing well under first-year head coach Jawan Howard go from unranked to number four in the nation is something. Well, hopefully they'll remain undefeated tonight, although it looks like Louisville seems to have their number. But, again, we'll know when it's 40 minutes have expired for sure. So, But, meanwhile, Tommy, glad to have you back on the air. A five-hour time difference last week obviously made it hard. But then again, we were worried about it because I knew where you were at, and I was watching those games wondering if I could see you out there anyway. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. And it was neat watching your Facebook uh Post about where you were at. So let's keep in tabs on you, Mr. Shanahan. Let me tell you, yeah, buddy. We were having fun. Oh, well, that's good. Well, meanwhile, we hope you had a great Thanksgiving out there, and uh, we look forward to doing some good work with you during the holidays. Okay, Tommy? Sounds good. I will right, we'll talk to you soon. Have a great rest of the night, Tommy. Thank you very much for being back on the program. Thank you. You're welcome. So, our uh, next guest is going to be obviously. Is going to be uh, David Levin, I believe, it. correct? Yeah, we're going to yeah. talk some Jacksonville Jaguars. So tell me a little bit, Scott. I I know we've been busy with this show and you know everything we got going on the Tribune. But how you know happy are you to see? You know, we one of the first topics I believe we discussed before we started when we started this sports exchange, or at least the revamping of it, was Jawan Howard going over to Michigan. And I know there was a little bit of skepticism in this building about how well he would do, but so far it looks like he's. The honeymoon phase is going strong, and he looks phenomenal. Yeah, I don't think there was ever a honeymoon phase. I knew that when Tom Shanahan, and I knew this, and all Tom did was simply reinforce it, was bringing in Phil Martelli was the key thing. you got a guy that's been at St. Joe's forever, okay, who's been a great coach, has won in the NCAA tournament, and worked in there, and then you got him as your right-hand man. And that goes back to what I talked about earlier with Beltron, whether you'd have Riggleman or any young guy, who needs an experienced right-hand guy. You know this in baseball and anything for that matter, and you need to have that. And Jawan Howard was smart enough to bring a guy of Martelli's caliber, and he was, you know, that's, I think, the key for a lot of these guys to do well. You need somebody with experience so you can handle the communicative side. Not like Jawan doesn't know the X's and O's side. He's a Michigan man in every sense of the word who has NBA experience, and Martelli – his coach in college, I think it's a great combination. Yeah. Just think about it. And we didn't talk about it, but I believe Kansas State's playing really well, too. I believe they're 8-0, if I'm not mistaken. So they're playing really well, and they're in the top five. But, yeah, look, Jawan Howard has been fantastic thus far. I think he's been, you know, obviously the addition of Martelli to that coaching staff. And it's important. It reinforces what you just said. You need to have good people around you who know the game. And not to say that Howard doesn't, but he's never done it at this level before. He's never coached at the college level. So, you know, the fact that he's having this early success is fantastic. And, you know, Louisville's a scary team. They have probably they have some names on there who are going to probably wind up in the NBA in the next year or so. But the fact that, you know, Howard's been able to get this kind of performance out of this team thus far is great. I mean, for you, other than the tires, it's probably a great time to be a Michigan sports fan. I would say for the most part. But meanwhile, uh, joining us here in the South Florida Tribune Network is David Levin. David how are you feeling? I know you weren't feeling good on Sunday, but hopefully you got a lot of energy for what we're going to do the, in the, uh, next Sunday. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me on. I apologize oh. for the weekend. Oh, don't uh, worry about I it. Never, I, never, I never miss a game, so if I'm missing a football game, you know it's got to be something. That, uh, not worried about it. But, uh, I do, do feel better. I think we're doing. Hey, Lewis. Hey, David. How's it going, man? I'm doing well. Hey, Lewis, I'm following you on Twitter. I'm retweeting everything you're telling me. <laughs> Are you retweeting everything I tell you to do? Then again, that's probably too much for you to handle, right? Because I do everything. Well, I, I don't know. It's, man, <laughs> I, I was told to do it, and I obeyed. That's okay. <laughs> what doing tonight? Hey, all he's doing is toting the company line. So We don't know which host to start, though. Do we start me or Scott? And that will lead us to the first topic that we're going to talk about, I believe, right? It's I don't know. The quarterback situation over down by you. Hey, listen, Mr. Levin, it's all about growth with the company. You know that as well, whether it's Lewis, myself, and you, since you're a part of the team, it's all good, buddy. It's all. Good. I'm just waiting on the Christmas bonus. What are you talking about? Well, I'm waiting for us to go ahead and get together when we're supposed to, to give it to you. Just well, teasing. This is true. I get, I get that part. Okay. Anyway, uh, no problem. 
Well, yeah, let's talk hey, about- if I don't give you a hard time, it don't make any difference because you know how much I think oh, about you. You're good. We're good, buddy. All right, with that said, go for it. All right, fire away. Would it- in person that was a tough situation anytime you have a guy that number one gets sacked three times has an intentional grounding call inside the 10 and throw an interception five uh miscues in the first half you know full well though folks that did show up that day it's safe to say that when gardner was in being one of the guys they needed something but the hole was too big what it is i just know that they made a decision to go with Minshew for the last four games you have a guy with a high intelligence and a lot of mobility and the offense right. showed a lot of spark in the second half what else did i need to see when a guy throws for 93 yards and he's being run out of a stadium i don't know my name is not ray charles i knew what i saw that day there you go i well, love it no no wow. disrespect toward Ray Charles, but I saw some wow. things. That... But it's also a song yeah. reference, David. Am I going to get a Stevie Wonder comment, too? Or yeah, for once in my life, so... we know who the quarterback is. There's another song reference. Yeah, well, we may be talking about Stevie Wonders, but Scott wasn't wondering what was going to happen in the second half. They now, needed to make a change. Yeah, Go much. ahead. Now, David, that leads me to ask this question because – I think it presents a, a weird dichotomy, and Shad Khan's probably pacing around like the mayor of some town right now. If Say, hypothetically, Minshew goes out and they finish the year 7-9. and nine. He goes 3-1 and one in the next four games that they played. And we outlined it last week that their ske- upcoming schedule is a mixed bag of good and you know mediocre teams. What do you do with Foles going into next season? Do you start the 2020 preseason kind of debating where your quarterback's going to be? Only because of Foles' price tag, he's going to make fifteen million next year. I don't think that eighty-eight is fully guaranteed. Or do you try to trade him? Okay, so there, here's the, here's here's the breakdown on that. There isn't, there's never really a quarterback competition in camp, and I, I know that we talk about it. And it's something you know everybody wants to you know create. It makes good drama and it makes great preseason stories, but there's never really a competition. It's two quarterbacks going out there. Whoever has the best stats basically becomes the quarterback. I think what Foles 
it's, it's, there's multiple ways you can look at it. He can retire, as there have been rumors that maybe he'll 